All right. Phew, finally. All right, welcome. Hi, everybody. It's the Kesh Plasma Reactor Group for Tuesday, August 1st, 2017. World Peace Day. Wee. So it's the Declaration of World Peace for Humanity. We're having the signing of all the world leaders to world peace today at the uh, Keshe Foundation uh, broadcast sites and it'll be all day um, signing the World Peace Treaty by either the uh, nation's leaders or their call it delegated representatives if they fail to show up which I think many of them will. So that'll be to their detriment because we'll have to have a, a delegated representative to replace them if they don't have uh, themselves or a specific representative show up. Well, that'll be interesting. So that'll start in about three hours at 10 a.m. Central European time. So we look forward to that on the Cash Foundation sites. Okay, and uh, so it's kind of a special day today. It is very much a special day today. It may, this day may end up being known as World Peace Day, if all goes well, which it seems to be. So, um, noting in that sort of frame of mind, what do you got today, Lee? <laughs> Let's have a look at your thing there. You get looks looks like a motor block from here at the small picture, but I'm sure it's uh, something different. Let me just get this zeroed in. <laughs> no, it's no not a motor block, but boy, it looks like one that I saw in a truck that burned out recently, and the whole <laughs> motor block was all melted because they have plastic all over them nowadays, right? So when they burn, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> when they burn, they just look like an ugly dark mess, just about like that, but. This has a this is a mess with a message I think. You got uh, <laughs> you got what the heck do you have here? This is one of your more exotic creations I've ever seen, Lee, and I've seen we've seen what a hundred different <laughs> hundred different reactors and this has got to be one of the most exotic. So all right, tell us about it. I'll quit talking. I just got to hear what you got to say here. It's, <laughs> And you, you see, I'm looking at myself in the in. mirror today, so I'm laughing and smiling. <laughs> <laughs> and the strange part about it, he actually has it plugged in, folks. This is a... I know I'm not supposed I, to, but no, I couldn't resist. <laughs> I don't even see a fire extinguisher handy. <laughs> tell it, no, tell us about it. What do you got here, Lee? I uh, showed you this project oh, over a year ago when I started it. And it's been sitting on the back corner of my, uh, my table here. <laughs> for a long time so i decided to finish it so i could get it off the table and move my computer over to the other corner of the table so i could get some better lighting and show things off better yeah eventually <laughs> but, you want a thousand square meter warehouse for this kind of thing you know but yeah this well, is... maybe <laughs> <laughs> well it's your rate of uh, production uh, <laughs> yeah you know. anyway yeah so yeah this, well, this is geez. holy cow this is this is an IQ 144. <laughs> so this is uh, Mike Nashif's design that he he was making IQ sixes and IQ 24s, and I think he had an IQ 144 in his his uh, shop too. Yeah. Uh, although he never showed us how to make them, it was more. Uh, uh, I forget the guy's name. The other guy who was making the Q devices had was showing us how to make 144s and had plans for it but i changed it to from his capacitor design to mike's infinity cap, uh, battery capacitor so there's 144 battery capacitors on this thing six Holy layers God. six layers thick here and uh four per face mm -hmm. for six faces and actually then there's uh in the middle here there's un, in the there's a glass box about eight inches by eight inches by eight inches that these are all glued to and in the middle there's there's some more battery capacitors. Uh, it's so, it's it's similar to Mike Nash's core for his, his uh, six 
IQ six, but I had to put, since I had so much space in there, I had some bigger ones, smaller ones and smaller ones. So they nested one inside each other in the middle there. I figured that would work. And then I had, there was still room for three uh, or, or four Gantz balls. So I got four Gantz balls in the Starship formation right in the middle. Um, what I'd like, like to do is to maybe spray the outside with, uh, with uh, H3 Gantz, uh, whatever that's called, <laughs> tritium Gantz, and then the, I, I can still lift the lid for to get inside here and, and spray. Oh uh, my God, look, it's got a lid. I can uh, do that again. You know, uh -huh. Well, I, I can't. It's wild. I, I'm going to bend my wires, all the wires yeah. on this one side, so I can bend it up a little bit and I can spray some deuterium Gantz in the middle and maybe <laughs> play maybe with it that run. way a little bit. But. Um, uh, but what does it do so far? Do you notice any effect at all? Well, it works. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, in I got the, you know. or otherwise. So <laughs> um, it works as far as lights light up with it and so on. So it works yeah, normally so as, as works a like an ordinary MagGrav for starters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, beep wise, it, it's about a foot away that so it stops yeah. beeping. A little, so bit, that, a little bit more uh, than a normal MagGrav, maybe? Yeah, they're ordinary MagGrav, like the factory MagGravs, uh, the Kesh MagGravs, and the IQ6s. They, they have a field out about six inches. Uh, I got uh, a couple of 24s, IQ24s. They'll go out 10 inches, and this goes out 12 inches. So it, I, I was thinking it would go out maybe two feet or in the two to three foot range, so... So, I'm a little disappointed uh, that way, but so uh, in this case, size does matter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so so now I got a a gradient of magravs from little guys to medium guys to this big guy. <laughs> so maybe that'll well, come in handy for now that you for a project you or two. Now that you mentioned that word, maybe you have a, a, a since you have a gradient and you have the bigger and smaller that gives you the opportunity to interact with uh, two or more of the reactors i guess and this big guy is he seems like a giver <laughs> like he's just <laughs> gonna give to the little ones for sure yeah and, and so far all i've put on here is about seven watts on the thing i don't know maybe the fields will get stronger if i put you know two thousand watts on the thing or oh something. true true yeah it might make a so, huge difference yeah and i haven't tried that yet i was going to do it just a while ago but i got sidetracked <laughs> well that'd be a great so, experiment let us know if when you try that or maybe you want well, to even can, try it during the workshop here if you get brave yeah well i can i got a 1500 watt heater just the other side of the room we can we can go plug it in and find out what happens yeah and you do have a fire extinguisher nearby right <laughs> <laughs> just in case our long fire hose would be fine what would i need that for <laughs> well, you just never know when you could have a meltdown, a core meltdown of your uh, of your hot glue. <laughs> Nothing worse than a hot glue core meltdown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's funny, but it's it's like the uh, what was it, Icarus, who tried to fly to the sun, and he had wax holding his feathers onto his wings, and. Uh, that might be the case here. Once this actually works, then you will have a core meltdown, and that would be the indicator that your reactor is truly working. Yeah, that maybe 14 seems, inches, but... Seems a little more than before. Like the thing... Yes. Would be same cool. amount whether the things turned on or off is about the same really so okay. yeah hmm. so it's a possibility anyway. it might build up over time as well that's a possibility too could be like but i don't need any more heat in the house at the moment so <laughs> <laughs> it'd be a good heater in the winter perhaps <laughs> i wonder what the resistance of it is under load that would be interesting too what do you mean the total resistance under load, if there is any, in terms of uh, what losses are happening inside that unit, what would it put out if it was in a, a tank of water and you were measuring the calories that were being put off by it? 
yeah i don't know i when i i tested the resistance of the you know hot wire into the hot wire out on the two uh mm-hmm. the hot plugs or the and it was uh up in the mega ohm range mm-hmm. okay so, so that it, means uh, it's constructed properly i think that's a good sign yeah. <laughs> so wow um that's what I was. Piece. It almost looks like it should be like put in a satellite and put in the space or something. What I was thinking, I still got that sort of health uh, thing set up in my living room with uh, eight megravs in it and that pipe frame mm-hmm. that I mm-hmm. showed there about eight months ago or something. I was thinking, uh, so I got four megravs up on the, the top of the frame. I was thinking I'd stick this one up in the floor in the bedroom above and uh, that'll give me a. Uh, starship formation with uh, mm. a four a four mag grab base on it, <laughs> and then mm. I can stand below in, in the health thing and see, see if the see what happens. Mm. But, so I might try that and see what just for fun. So uh, when you hook up a meter to this, do you get any voltage out of it? Uh, I never checked that. <sighs> You may may have built a self-sustaining generator unintentionally. I don't think so. <laughs> well, it sure doesn't looks like to... it could hold a lot of charge if it was charged up in its some manner. It's got 122.3 volts on the output at the moment. Okay, so what if you unplug it? What what happens? Essentially, it goes to zero or, or 50 millivolts. Is that a, that's on the AC scale? That's on the AC scale, yeah. Try it on the DC and see what you get. On DC, I got... It's, it's really close to zero. It was 15 millivolts there for a little bit. Now it's five... That was zero, so mm, okay. very little. Yep. Next to nothing. So anyway, okay. another toy to play with. There you go. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you never know what it could be the core of at some point later. Anyway, I figured it would be a good, uh, nice, strong magrav to get my peace message out. Yeah. Yeah. Are you still um, feeling the fields these days? Have you felt any fields that are worth feeling lately? Well, when I put my hands on around this thing, I can feel some fields. And uh, oh, only when it's plugged but, in, but, do you figure? Or like, do you feel anything beforehand? Not really. And right now, I got no light on. <laughs> but it. Uh, it's weak. I mean, I, I felt better, a stronger field on that hand scanner I made. Right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I was sort of uh, asking it questions, trying to find out what its name was. And I figured out it's, you know, it's a, you, you, you sort of say, okay, if it's the answer's yes and tingle my right hand, if the answer's left, tingle the left hand. And, and, uh, I, as far as I can figure, it's a female, and its its name is uh, Joseline. Wow. <laughs> so. Okay. I see you've progressed a bit from just feeling the fields. Now your name. So them. that <laughs> so that name came to me about two weeks ago when I was, and I don't out of the blue kind of thing, one night laying up in bed, and I I said, mm, I wonder if that's the name of the new Magrav I'm working on, and then then. Today I was sort of okay. What's the first letter? We're going through the alphabet, and then when I hit the J, all of a sudden my right, you know, I I feel a little bit in my left hand, just really weak, really weak, and then I hit the J, all of a sudden I felt it really weak in the other hand. So, oh, yeah. and then I sort of going through the alphabet for each letter and the name kind of thing, and it's mm-hmm. it's spelt real funny, but <laughs> it's uh, yeah. it's sort of sort of what I what I said. Right you know, on. or yeah. what came to me as the name there a while back. So, so anyway, it's yeah. uh, 
and, and it might be just confirming what's already in your subconscious in a way that you've uh, well, already could determined be. it and it confirms it or it could be determining it in that moment hard to say yeah pretty, pretty uh, worth uh, worth looking into though so anyway okay mr cash says uh, all these things have their own souls and all that kind of stuff and <laughs> And I know the, you know, Mike Nashriff and all those guys, they're all naming, had names for their, their things. And or I don't I think the, I think the Magrav actually picks its own name, whatever. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. so the, the trick is to figure it out. But anyway, I just got it turned on here late this afternoon. Just to see how it go in. So how, I haven't much, played with it too much. How much does that thing weigh? It must be pretty heavy, eh? Like you got a lot of coils on there. Yeah. Not too bad. Oh, it's twenty twenty pounds maybe. Okay, I thought it maybe maybe more. maybe only ten pounds. I have it's in that ten twenty pound range. About eight pounds of hot glue. <laughs> that's, that's where all the weight is. You have to buy all the hot glue from the local hardware store. <laughs> no, no, I had to order it in from the warehouse. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. That happens with they had, they had about. They had two boxes on the shelf, so they said, oh, order me in 10 boxes. <laughs> <laughs> it happens with cash experimenters a lot. They run out of supplies in the local hardware store building their uh, reactors. <laughs> so so whenever, <laughs> whenever I got a project like this on the go, I got to go down there and order my hot glue ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, very nicely. Anything else for us this week, or uh, what, what no, other, this, this no is other it. Uh, secret peace projects for uh, global domination of peace? No, this this was going to be my global dominator right here. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> we all need a global dominator, global <laughs> peace dominator. That's right. Get get that peace message out. It's global peace or else. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thanks, Leo. <laughs> Take it back to. Uh, Rick, any... could I ask? Oh, oh sure. Yeah, let's ask Lee questions. Sorry, didn't mean to cut off that. Go ahead, Mark. I just had a question because it's that's so interesting. <laughs> how does how is it wired? Is it just one complete wiring, or you know, I mean, can you just kind of? Let me grab the wiring diagram here. I don't know any. Basically, basically, you got two two. You got the the power coming in on either side here, and then you got two series of capacitors about 48 of them each side in series and then in between each one you got another capacitor in parallel so, so then it's just all one hot it's all one hot way in right it's all hot in and hot out through your capacitors yeah so you're you got your hot hot in one side and then the hot comes out the other side and then at the other end of the far end that's where it goes into the core of the of the box, right. so you got two wires coming out of the core, right. tying in at the other end, and uh, you know I don't know, I mean it goes in, but it could come across that first capacitor and back out again for all I know. Well, it doesn't matter because it's it's it, it, it just in parallel and series. That's and right. It's all it's all hot pushing in through it, right? No mm -hmm. negative at all anywhere in there, right? Any which. No negative anywhere in that. No, no, area. no, no. There's no common or no negative. It, the the common just goes right through to the the plug-in, the power oh. bar. Yeah. You know what yeah. it looks like. That picture looks a lot like uh, an intestine. <laughs> so it's like a flow. It's, it seems that when you first put it up, it looked very much like a, from you know a bit of a distance. The picture looks like a, an intestine. Um, yeah, and in the way the it's, unit it, does too. It's very easy to get confused wiring it. You, each one of these has got an in and an out. And you got to get that oriented right, and then uh, every now and then you'll you got to 
sometimes they go right beside each other and no problem they they they're easy to wire but then the, the parallel awesome. ones you got to wire and but sometimes you got to go from here all the way down to somewhere at the other side because i go four here four here four here and then i flip over here and i go four 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 so it's or, you know so it, like three this way and then three that way and then it starts over again for the next layer where would be where if anywhere where would be the if you were to get a short where would be where would be a common place for like a short to happen there uh well on these infinity capacitors that mike makes is uh the inside uh the inside wire on the on the on the plasma capacitor it's actually folded back and forth eight times. Uh-huh. Okay, and then twisted with a drill. Right. And then dipped in uh in yeah. the, in this case we're using ashes ash water instead of of uh, caustic soda to nanocoat it. Well, Although that, I pre I pre nanocoated all my wires with caustic and then then you know did the twisting then dumped it in the ash to to get the the final nanocoat and uh well, so a, so you got and then the in and the out on each of the capacitors is on that wire twisted through the middle so uh so basically you're it that that would be the it's almost a dead short kind of thing if it was if it was matter state if it's plasma you're supposed to get all these interactions between the the wires going back and forth plus the twisting okay so, all right that's cool. So, so there is a possibility of getting a dead short on each one of these capacitors, really. <laughs> well, probably in any case, because of the uh, caustic breaking down, uh, is, is it aluminum foil that's wrapped around it? Yeah, I'd say that, that part's the same as the cash capacitors. Yeah. It's uh, your core wire, then you got your paper, right. and then at the one end, you got your, your aluminum foil with right. two coils on the aluminum and three coils on the paper. Mm -hmm. So that's. But where does the ash come in? Well, the, the uh, both uh, uh, both for the key devices and this IQ device, they, they're they they weren't using caustic. They were using oh, they bare, were bare copper wire and 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 dumping it in the, the ash oh, ash okay. water. And oh. also, when you put for your paper, instead of you know painting it with uh, Gans, you you dipped it in the in the ash water and roll it up then you dip your aluminum foil in the ash water and roll it up well, that, so that would be, wouldn't that be caustic rick the ash water would be yeah well that that's where you that's how they make lye out of ashes that's right one that's of the ways. how you make it it's not necessarily caustic right off the bat but if you know in theory if you boil it down and so on then it would definitely make caustic and it depends on the ash what kind of ash too with different trees have different effects different acidities make a different that. kinds of lie yeah they found yeah. The, the ancient people found that certain trees had the best kind of lie to make soap and so on yeah so pine cones are supposed to be good to burn get ashes from pine cones but <laughs> i had a few of those but most mostly it was just scraps from the wood shop <laughs> well thanks lee i just was wondering about how it was wired and where you know because i got one wired now too you'll see you know i got something to show but I was worried, you know, where's the short, where does the short, you know, to look for and stuff like that. But, okay, I, I understand that now. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Any yeah. other questions for Lee? All righty. We'll uh, move off from that one. And thank you very much, Lee. That was really, uh, really cool, as always. Great seeing your stuff. Okay, Mark, um, you were kind of uh, remarking there. You want to keep remarking along with some of your stuff? If anybody else wants to go ahead of me, that's fine. You know me, I, I always have stuff. <laughs> you, you always defer, but you always have stuff to show at the same time. Yes, yeah, very nice. Is there anybody else who has something they'd like to show here? Um, that they have to go later, or they like to get it in right away, then now would be the time to get your question or or presentation in, and uh, otherwise we can defer to Mark. 
going once, going twice. Take it away, Mark. What do you got for us today? <laughs> On Global Peace Day, World Peace Day. There you go. Okay, just a second here while I get it uh, lined and pinned and spotlighted and everything else that I have to do. Alrighty, now oh, what do we hit? Oh, we've got the. <laughs> I just noticed the picture here. And you see the little, the little, little whirly gig in the middle. So it's this little baby's coming to life here, right? She's shaking. She's got a heartbeat. We, we got a heartbeat. We got a heartbeat, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, I, you know what? I, I just, I, you know me, I overthink things and whatever. So, you know, and I, I tried so hard and I, and this is, and I, when I was completely done with it, I just sat in front of it and I just said, this is, I want everybody to know that I did this in a peaceful intention and whatever comes of it, comes of it. And I think I did something or I ran into something here that might, it, it, we looked at it last week, but I didn't really realize what I was looking at last week. We were just, I was just kind of amazed that it actually kind of worked a little bit for me. So I've had a week now to just kind of look at it and kind of analyze it, but I didn't have the motor and the spinning egg last week. That was this, this that's today's edition. <laughs> Let me get my live stream audio on. This changes a lot because I bet you have a, a, like a vibration or a, a pulse in the whole frame of the unit now. So the whole thing has a bit of a, a shake to it, eh? A little bit of a oscillation, you might say? Absolutely. So all the and GANS balls and all the pipes that are, you got, the pipes are no, filled, aren't they? Or? No, 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 no. Not, okay. Um, the, I wanted to keep it independent. I wanted to keep the uh, the spinning egg independent of everything else because everything, if I put, because the uh, small balls that are the colored balls are um, just freestanding. Yeah, I know that, but I, I mean, the vibration will affect them though because they're now, everything in that structure is now oscillating to the vibration oh. of that egg. Oh yes, it, you can feel, I can feel it in my feet. Yeah, but it's yeah. Not, okay. not connected any way to the frame or to the upper part. Does it There's make you want to dance when it, you feel it, it in your feet? Yeah. <laughs> like the uh, cash uh, dance music at the front of the uh, workshops we have now? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need to do. You need to tune it to the cash dance music, and then you got it. <laughs> well, you know, I just actually, because um, I, I had a couple of different prototypes where I had the motor and it was as I, as the, you know, I'll, I'll let the, I'll show you how it builds up power and everything. And it actually does what it wants to do. But I had um, just, I had made the plastic uh, tubing for it and I made the four legged prong a leg for it. And as I was, it just, it didn't break it. It melted the pipes. It had so much torque on it that it just tore them to pieces. So then I just thought, ah, oh, what am I going to do? So I, I, I rummaged around in some stuff, and I found a piece that I bought a year, almost two years ago, at a rummage, you know, at a, uh, you know, at a uh, resale shop. You know, something I thought, ah, oh, this looks pretty cool. I, I, I'm going to buy it. It was only five bucks. And, it's a little stand or what? I thought, oh, you never know. Two years later, two years later, I got to use it. It was, I just can't even believe you buy, you, you know, it said to me way back then, don't worry, sir. I'm going to come in handy someday. Don't you worry. And sure enough, it did. So uh, I made the stand and then I weighted it with a couple of big weights there because what it was doing, it wanted to kind of walk, it wanted to turn. And, uh, well, yeah, what is the motor from again? I don't know. It was another rummage sale. It, it looks like a pretty big motor. Is it 12 volt kind of deal? Or maybe it's from a, 
Is that one of your one of the weed whacker motors, or what kind of thing would it be? I don't really, Rick. I couldn't tell you. I okay. bought it. At, uh, you know, it's a. Uh, it has two leads on it. It has. Yeah. And what do, you, what do you got running on it now for voltage? It's well, on your power got, supply? Yeah. Okay, yeah, if we could see that a little bit. Oh, I can't quite make it out, but that's okay. Yeah. Just tell uh, it. What is it running at now, roughly? Or is it very, uh, what's well, it right varying now, from? It's running, uh, the the uh, output on the, um, the uh, power supply is 8 volts, mm -hmm. and uh, it's 1.27 amps. Okay, and then so I about, have, uh, it's about 10 watts, basically, then. About 10 watts. And then I have uh, my electrical meter hooked up to it in a, in a couple of different other spots to get a reading off of it to see how much I'm either losing in the system. And I'm only lo it's I'm getting, um, it's reading uh, seven, uh, seven, not quite uh, eight uh, volts. It's like seven point uh one six something like that it's yeah, losing about it's losing about 80 something you know what i'm saying the difference is eight. seven seven twenty and it should be up to eight eight zero zero where it's saying seven twenty point eight volts yeah that's a fair amount that's probably due to the lines are too thin or there's resistance somewhere in the in, in the, the lines or something but um, yeah, okay, so it's probably like a 12 volt motor and it's, you know, uh, just running on 8 volts now. So it's running at, what, probably a few hundred RPM or something. Yeah, I would say at least 500 RPM, maybe mm -hmm. three to 500. Yeah, yeah. But the thing of it is what, is what you're looking at, but, you're, but what we don't realize is I have the power for the power supply and the negative for the power supply attached to it. And I've taken the, uh, the, the motors running off of positive and negative off of the, in, off of the uh, unit itself. So uh, my question to you and, the, and uh, to whoever's looking at this, am I, I'm putting uh, material AC power into this unit and what's coming out of it and supplying the motor is that plasma energy because it's, oh, you know, I'm running, you are, know, I'm running. Wait a minute, are you running, you were saying you got like 8 volts, is that AC that's going in? 8 volts yeah. AC? AC. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That's different. All right, and the motor is probably a DC motor though, I imagine. It's a big motor, I don't know. How would you tell? How could you tell? Uh, usually there's some some stuff printed on the motor somewhere, a tag or some uh, oh, uh, stamping, is, some so stamp old. numbers or something you can ID it with. The only thing it has is a Chrysler stamp on the on the center in the back. A Chrysler stamp. Okay, yes. well, it would probably be like um, a, a window motor, a window wind-up motor. Oh, it's pretty big. I don't know. It, I don't know it's if not it a fit. it's not a starter motor, right? It's not that big, right? No, I, I might I'm thinking it, but it had a nut on. I it's more of the same size as like a vacuum motor. And what kind of shaft was it? Just a straight shaft, or? Yep, just a straight shaft. About what a quarter inch or something, maybe a little less three yeah. sixteenths. Okay, well, the nut on it, the uh, the the uh, drive nut is a quarter inch, so the shaft might be just a hair littler than that. Mm hmm I see. So, but I'll give you this information. What I, um, you know, like the little sleeves that you uh, put lamps together with? Mm -hmm. Those little um, sleeves? Yeah, I had it's, one in my hands uh, two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> believe it or it's, not. Believe it or not, it slid right over the shaft. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. So then what I did was I drilled a hole through that, um, that uh, lamp, that threaded lamp piece. And I put a bolt, nut and a bolt through it. And then through that, I used the, the, the uh, lamp pieces. And what I did was I took um, a three-quarter inch uh, cup or uh, an end of uh, one of the PVCs. And all the pieces for the lamp 
that you put a lamp together that screws together. If you, hold, you drill that hole out, it fits in there perfectly to, to put, uh, screw that up perfect so that it, it's nice and tight. I mean, there was, there was no play in it at all. Then I just epoxied the egg to the top of it. Right on, cool. <laughs> it's not, you know, there was no way. I tried as hard as I could to try to get it as perfect, but there's no way you there. I mean, there's no way I could have got it perfect. But then I started thinking, why do I need it perfect? I want that wobble. Because well, of that's the, the thing about it is, um, I think the wobble factor is uh, very important, actually, and maybe that's something that we have overlooked in the past, because uh, um, anytime you have wobble, then you've got a unbalanced situation that's always trying to return itself back to balance. So if you have, uh, you know, if you want to introduce an unbalanced situation in order to um, create a pulse or create a some sort of vibration an oscillation a resonance <clears throat> gives you an opportunity for um, um, you know literally shaking things up I don't know case, if he's gonna be able to pick up that uh, it's just gonna flash like that if I got really yeah. close to the output but sometimes yeah, that that's output, cool yeah, you know how hard it is to re get that readout. Yeah, we can't get both probably. So, um, what's on the bottom of the motor there? That's kind of like a clamp or something around the bottom. What's the, way down yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. That's a five-inch C clamp. Oh. Band clamp. Okay, and the band clamps to what? <laughs> to well. <sighs> Uh, Can yes, you see yes. this little green thing here? Yeah, yeah. That's a that was that a, a base thing that I found, and that had a, a round base on it. Okay. A five inch base. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So the engine sat right on top of it. You can't so mount it. You can't mount it right onto your frame. Onto here. Yeah, because then you don't have to put your balance weights on there, and that would allow the thing to move around as it prefers on the floor and that would be really cool i tried that and it just broke everything apart <laughs> yeah that's the side effect if you don't reinforce it in a certain way i guess or put a this rubber is... mounting in so it doesn't uh, destroy things yeah <laughs> i mean i got i got rubber mounts underneath the weights just to keep it so that it you know yeah. to keep the balance of the engine because yeah, yeah. of the wow so um can you hear it right now no, we just hear you. It's actually let's, pretty good. Um, let's uh, well, let's give it a little juice. Yeah, give her some juice. What the juice? But the thing is, but now we're hearing a little bit. You just barely hear it there. The noise canceling microphones do weird things with these uh, motor noises. Can you can you hear it a little bit? Yeah, very little bit. The noise canceling tends to cancel it out. Well, the funny thing is, it, it changes volume as the uh, wobble starts to find its own position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got glass in front of it too. Oh, I There's see. And what's in what's inside the ball now? What's inside the egg in here? Yeah. There's the egg has uh, the sand, the um, sand, the uh, crushed quartz sand crystals, completely filled with the crest, uh, the crystals, and then I put the three different types of Gans in there, or the three different types of CH three. I have so the. It's, uh, uh, it's liquid. Uh, plus the sand then to fill up the whole thing? Yes. Okay, got it. And what were the combinations you were going to say? Well, the three combinations of the three different uh, CH3s were uh, the Himalayan uh, CH3, the uh, uh, biosalt CH3, and the uh, potassium uh, magnesium CH3. 
And then on the outside, I don't know, I could sl slow it down, but I have a ring like I showed you last week. I have that outside ring in there. Yeah. And that ring has just a small amount of each one of those in there. And then, and then just a small amount of uh, uh, CO2 and then another drop of uh, zinc oxide for the outside ring. So that's the way the whole thing was produced up and down. But the, like I was saying, um, and I can take a, a hot, you know, like the way it's wired is everything on the outside, everything up here is a hot lead. That's a hot lead. That lead goes down, and I, all my top ring is all hot. It drops into here, drops down out of this top ring, down to the bottom ring, fills that bottom ring, comes back out, and then travels along the top of the capacitors all the way back up to where I, this is the hot lead right here. And then it'll send it back down. And it's just a complete loop. And then the, and then the, Second thing was, I used the middle one as the negative, but these two capacitors are in reverse polarity, meaning that I can take a, 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 a plus read off the top here and a minus read off the outside of the um, capacitor here. And that's the same way through all the capacitors except for these two, this one and this one. Every time I took a reading, it was the opposite. The inside core wanted to be negative, and the outside core wanted to be positive. What I didn't understand was I needed two of those to do that because that changes, uh, that flips the polarity from the top to the, you know, it takes the, um, without having a, uh, a place to where it shorts out. There's no place for it to short out because it, it changed right here from, from the inside to the outside. It shouldn't have changed here, but it does. And it, it just gave me two ends and able to, to be able to connect to at the very end. So now I know exactly how it's wired and I could do it again if I had to. And, and it, it's not that hard of a deal to understand that. And I think once you make enough of these capacitors, some will be positive and some will be negative. I only had, a, these were made a while ago and I wouldn't, I haven't made anything else. I have the same idea and design, but when we went on hiatus, I just stopped everything. So I just kind of didn't do anything and just let it, but now we're in a, in a point where uh, peace is at our at hand. And I, I hope that this, I can project my piece on, on one of the, I'm so happy that this is just, uh, this is my gift to Mr. Cash on his birthday. And I hope and say, and just allow my, this, the only reason why I have this is because he allowed to share his goodness with us, the goodness with me. And, and I'm so thankful. There's not too many people that share good things with people in this world nowadays. And uh, he just, he was a person that said, hey, you know, if you're willing to do some things and try some things and listen to some things, I'm willing to give you a chance to know some things that I know. And if you just keep your mouth shut and keep your head down and be, and be very uh, aware of everything that you do, be, good things will happen. Very good things will happen. I, I, I just hope that he has the very best birthday that he could ever have in his entire life. That is my wish, my hope for Mr. Cash today. Thank you, Mark. Uh, that was wonderful. And uh, yes, I think we all wish Mr. Cash a very happy birthday today. And that was my wish too, that he has the best birthday of his lifetime. In fact, of all best lifetime in the, uh, best birthday in the universe. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Absolutely. So this is, you know, there's a lot of more, a lot more things I could are uh, for observation. Like I was saying, you know, I could start to try to push more power through it, um, but the unit won't let 
more power go through it until it's ready for it. If that makes sense. Like right now I could push, I could push the voltage up to 30 volts and it would only accept nine volts right now. But if I left it running for another half hour, 45 minutes, it might allow 12 volts to go through it. And then, you know, and then 13 volts. And all of a sudden it just, and then it kind of finds its balance again and it stays mm -hmm. right there. And then uh, oh, I feel like going up a little bit farther. Yeah. Because if I left it as, I can't show, I'm at 10 now and it's at nine, but you know, I got it cranked up open. That's Max. Can you hear it? We heard it accelerate, but then we can barely hear it now that it's running. It's funny. The, the, the microphone cuts it out. Because it's almost, it's hitting, over, I mean, it's almost perfectly balanced right now. There's hardly any uh, vibration at all to it. But you can see the wobble in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would, I would estimate that it's probably going at least... I want to say at least 2,000 RPMs. Yeah, I think more than that. More like three or four, probably. And I'm not too worried about sitting in front of it right now. Like I said, I got the plexiglass, but I mean, everything that's put together right now, it just, it's just humming right along. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so far, so, so good, Captain. <laughs> that feels good. I, don't, I mean, can you see the green? Oh, can't see the green light, but the green there's a little light on the top. Yeah. Oh, that's an LED that's on. Okay. Yeah. That's green for go. <laughs> we have ignition. So that's one of my little projects. Uh, just like I said, this is a little dedication to our, uh, our friend that gave us so very much. I'm so happy today. It's it's a it's a peace day. It's I feel peace in my heart. I'm so happy. It's like I said. It's, I'm just happy that it's running, and you know where I'm going from here. I got the big one just ready for it. I'm ready for that big one, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe I'll make a little tritty about it. Maybe I'll get the separation. Maybe uh, maybe maybe maybe. Only observation at this point now. Yep. Oh, nice work, Mark. Hard to tolerate the full speed all day, eh? Is that maxed out? You want me to go a little closer? Is that maxed out now? Can't hear me. I can't hear you. Yeah. Is that maxed out? I don't know. Let me find out. I don't know. Yeah, it's really winding out. <laughs> you, know, you gotta that's that's four amps at uh, twenty eight volts. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a lot more. Uh, I saw about 120 watts, so it's 10 times more power than you had before.
you heard a little grr there, a little growl, <laughs> a little growl came out of it when it decelerated. And that's all we heard. The that's what happens sound. when you come out of hyperspace. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> and it did that when it accelerated and when it decelerated, but otherwise the noise canceling microphone seems to uh, block the sound. It's interesting. It only uh, we only hear the transitions rather than the constant um, sound. Is there any way I could get take that out of there and just have an open mic? Um, I think uh, the Zoom um, automatically uh, adjusts the sound and cancels it, or, or perhaps it's in your microphone itself. I don't. I'm not sure. Oh, most microphones. Yeah. We hear it ch chattering along a little bit there now. Yeah, it's kind of at low speeds. It's got a little, little chippy sound to it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It's it's different, ready to uh, take off. Different personalities. <laughs> it definitely when a, a little uh, spear like that revs up, it gets your attention. You know, at high speeds, it's you start to have a lot more respect for it, especially if it gets up around uh, 10, 20, up to thirty thousand RPM. Then the you, get, you start to go, whoa, there's a lot of energy behind this thing. <laughs> I don't, you know, I mean, that's uh, uh, an eighth inch uh, plexiglass, but, and it's plastic, but I don't know. I'm Is sure it's it uh, acrylic or polycarbonate. That's the thing. Uh, it's acrylic. Yeah, acrylic will break. Yeah. But oh, it'll, yeah. it'll buffer pretty good, but it will shatter. Whereas polycarbonate of that strength would pretty much take a, a 22 bullet would bounce off. <clears throat> well, that's what I got. Nice. Thank you, Mark. Lovely. Sure. All right. Anybody else with something they'd like to show and tell for today? Could show sort of a cute little project that I've been playing with here. I've been looking at these uh, these spinner toys that you see in the supermarkets and so on these days. You hold it in your fingers and give it a spin. And it spins for quite a long period of time. It's got pretty good bearing in the middle. And some of them, I've got another one over here. You've still got Mark highlighted. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. There I go. I will explain the stun silence. I'll show, I'll show better here. This is a, called a spinner spinner toy that you see in the supermarkets and so on. You give it a spin and it spins pretty good for a long period of time. Okay, I've got another one here, black one. Same thing, spin it. The difference is this one doesn't have any bearings in the middle. It's all just solid pieces. This one, however, it's got three nice little bearings on each uh, end here. So when you spin it, they have a chance to move themselves if they wish to. And so on. It makes it a little different in the way it performs. So what I want what I propose to do, which I've been just playing, toying with the idea until I have a bit of time. I don't have much time today. I'll take this, and I've got these little um, containers, these little bulbs. And uh, the idea is they have a, a, a cap on the bottom. In fact, some of, them have, some of them that I have have a screw end on it. I was trying to find... Oh, let me just see if I can find that just for a moment here. No. No. Well, can't locate it right now, but uh, suffice to say, there's <coughs> some of these have little screw ends on the bottom and some of them have a, a rubber plug some of them even are just sealed totally but these ones are actually unsealable 
so you can turn it upside down use a, a hypodermic needle and inject them with uh, GANS water or GANS okay so and the idea is you can uh, you know hang them as a sort of an amulet thing on a string around your neck or you could put it on a bracelet or you could you know mount it in your dash of your car as an emergency GAN supply or something I, whatever but the idea I thought was <clears throat> I'll take, one, take three of these and mount them inside this thing sort of like that and I've got two and I don't have three right now but there's two okay So the idea then is once they're filled up with GANs, it's pretty simple to spin them. <laughs> so we have uh, three little reactors in bearings so they can rotate as they wish, uh, rotating in the outside of this little uh, rotating reactor thing. And you would think if all goes really well and you have loaded your reactors with the correct combination, perhaps this little spinner would just keep spinning. And wouldn't that be nice? You have the world's first little demonstration of a plasma-powered reactor that starts by push-starting. <laughs> You give it a little push, and away it goes. And the great thing is, you can reverse it at any time. If you want to undo the uh, field effects that you just created, and planes are crashing from the sky or something, you might want to undo it by reversing the uh, rotation. Anyway, um, what do you think? Is it a winner? Is it going to make it into your supermarket? Who knows? I'll give you a thumbs up on it. Good idea. Thumbs up, eh? Oops. There it goes. Well, another idea bites the dust. Well, you get the drift. Um, like you can actually spin these things so that there's so you can if you're good at it, which I'm not, you can spin it and uh have it balance on your thumb or in this case <clears throat> you can spin it have it balance on your thumb add a full ball of GANS to it and you can imagine with the three reactors rotating <laughs> See, I lost attention briefly. It requires your full attention. But you can imagine this rotating. I mean, I could put it on the table with the GANS ball sitting on it. <clears throat> could be glued on, but it just happens to have a little divot in here that almost fits the uh, ping pong ball. So it will actually rotate. Uh, in fact, I can hold the ball. There we go. Now with the three little reactors, I'll put the two in that I have. See if they fit. With, see if this will all work. Got another one, but it doesn't have the doodad on it. But I think it'll, yeah, it'll suffice. So we got three little reactors. Okay, now we got two little reactors. That one didn't like to be in there. So you get the idea anyways, we would have three reactors rotating around the central core reactor. And um, <clears throat> you give that, oh, I guess I lost two of them. If you give that a good spin, see I'll, I would set this up so that this actually has a, a rubber seal around it and it pushes in there nicely and, and locks into place. So three of them, okay, none of them now, but you get the idea. Three of them rotating around the ball on their own bearings and uh, this thing will run for several minutes uh, when you give it a good spin. Mind you there'd be more air resistance with three globes on there 
but also more weight so it might go even longer. So um, it could be sort of a attention device. You have to focus your attention on this to hold it all together while it's all rotating and uh, you know it's uh, you could focus your attention on world peace while you were um, allowing your reactor to go. You might want to you know you could actually walk down the street with this in your fingers and uh, be using it. <clears throat> Maybe you could even mount it Mount it on your chest as a, an amulet that you spin every once in a while. Or how about this one? Mount it on that. <laughs> as a little propeller thing. And you've got a reactor combination on your hat. Which that started you your vinyl like Give a spin every once in a while. Pardon me? Which store did you find those things in? Um, I found this in uh, the world famous Canadian Tire, in uh, uh, found in every Canadian city. So they're you know nine ninety nine. It's pretty cheap actually for four bearings. You can't even buy four bearings for ten bucks these days. So it's a pretty good deal. You could always remove the bearings and use them in something. They're pretty much skateboard size, but not quite. Um, so it's actually a pretty good basis for a small reactor. You could put tubes in here and have the reactors accessible through screw holes and whatnot. And uh, they could be in different heights. And uh, you've got that central bearing and the three bearings all set up, ready to go. And nice aluminum casting. So that's a little uh, a peace project here. If I can get a few minutes spare time to actually work on it to complete it. <clears throat> Got some little glass balls sitting on the floor here that I have to pick up before I step on them. That wouldn't be too good. They are pretty tough little uh, spheres, these things. I, <clears throat> I've ro rotated them up to 10, 12,000 RPM and there's no problem with as far as uh, longevity goes, I've actually dropped them on the floor and uh, had them not break. I've broken a couple too, which can happen. But they were <coughs> what you do is they come like this, the hole in that end, and then you get a fitting kind of like this with a hole in the end. Demo straight. And so you can. Uh, fit that over the other piece and glue it on actually you end up with something like that and then there's a little uh, screw piece that goes in the end you screw it in and that seals it or there's a or you can also have just a, a little rubber plug that goes in and seal it that way the screw piece has a hole so you can actually put a threaded thing in it and hang it hang it to, or put a loop on it and make it into an earring or something like that and I don't have a demonstration one here but the ones with the blue um, copper uh, CUO copper oxide GANs are just beautiful inside of here maybe I'll go and squirt some in and, uh, and try it here if I get a few spare minutes so three of them or set up with you know, CH3, CO2 GANs, and uh, copper oxide, or any combination you wish, basically, can be uh, experimented with. No motors needed, no batteries included. Okay, there's your top secret hint for the day, for the week, actually. I like it. See, uh, <laughs> you know, for about 20 bucks worth of materials, you've got a working three or actually four core with that. A working four core reactor for 20 bucks. Not bad. 
these things uh, here are available we talked about them before but they're available on eBay uh, I think what are they called uh, uh, do, 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 do. it's like flask or something under uh, uh, what do they call these things uh, 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 uh. It's a specific name for them which I don't recall offhand um, but you can look at them under miniature globes, um, fillable globes. What the heck is the word for it? Something like that. They are. You can search. You'll find them. You could expand on that idea, Rick, for that uh, the starship spinning balls. You could uh, uh, somehow. Uh, 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 like I was going to use a bicycle hub in the center for the because it's got ball bearings on it, and then you could have a disc of plywood on that, and then you could embed a, a ball bearing, you know, 18 ball bearings around the uh, the the disc, and then glue a ball on each one so the ball can spin as well as the the whole circle could spin for your uh, for your starship with the, the spinning balls on it. I think I lost you and just in that last part of connecting you you say ball bearings like 18 ball bearings that would be on the yeah. plate yeah I get 18 ball bearings and you know just drill them in and mount them on the plate and then put your ping pong balls on the ball bearings so the the balls could spin and then the whole plate could spin as well so you you've got uh, instead of instead of building the the cage or the track for the balls to go around on Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm still visualizing the way you see it there. Maybe we could do a little, um, let me do a screen share thing here so we can figure this out because it's good to talk about a couple of different designs. Um, uh, let, let, let me see here. There we go. This out of the way and this up. You see the whiteboard there? I do. Okay, so can, can you draw on it what you mean, uh, Lee, to start with there? Or, or maybe I can? <laughs> if you can, go ahead. Imagine that's a circle. Okay. And in the, in the, in the center here, you got, I was, like I've got a, a bicycle wheel hub, which I've taken the, uh, the spokes off of so all I got is, is the hub in the center with the ball bearings mm -hmm. so you, you can uh, screw this say this is a half inch plywood or quarter inch plywood and then you could uh, screw it to the holes in the hub where the the spokes used to be so now now you got a spinning disc basically and then if you have drill the hole for you for a series of ball bearings around the, the outside you know, you, then now you got, and then you just glue a ball to the, you know, the inner, inner part of the ball bearing so that your ping pong ball could spin. I got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it also the whole plate had spin. So you'd right. have 18, 18 of these balls around the outside. Mm -hmm. Each ball could spin on its own. And then you could, uh, you know, spin the whole plate. Cause, uh, what I understand, uh, that, uh, that they were showing at the Arizona factory, they had a, actually a, like a, a a track for these balls to run in, and then they were they were That's had a motor right. on the track spinning the track around, and the balls were sort of going around. Uh, yeah, the idea being that the... that's the same as spinning the plate, but this also lets the balls spin themselves without the interference yes. of of friction and and uh, mm -hmm. and you know. Because there's a lot of with the in that track, there's a lot of friction where the balls can't really spin on their own. Whereas this well, idea here, true, yeah, the ball yeah. can spin Ult itself. Ultimately, with the ultimate track, then there wouldn't be you know hardly any friction. The idea that would contain them without 
uh, you know, the resistance or friction that could be involved there. And that's a tricky thing with the track system. Um, uh, but the, it's also the idea with the track is nice because the balls can uh, uh, position themselves uh, 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 with their neighbors yeah, they, easier. You know, they can you know, do a, a well, positive that, yeah. position. It depends how much space you have in the track. Uh, you know, spare space. If you had, you know, mm -hmm. a couple inches of spare space, they can sort of group together or ungroup. But yeah, right. Um, I don't know if that's sure. important or is it more important for to maintain the positioning that way, yeah. like you're talking about, and allow the rotation instead, which is the advantage of the system you're talking about, and my yeah, little I, spinner thing as well, which you yeah. know you're locked in with a lot of parameters with this. You don't have the variation between the the balls that way. You you'd have to, uh, you know, it's all preset, basically. Well, even if they're going around in the track, I mean, the balls are all preset, basically. You can't, they can't change positions or whatever, so it's... Mm -hmm. Well, they, yeah, they might rotate and position themselves differently if they were actually interacting with each other. Yeah. This is one of the pro one of the projects I'm going to be doing here shortly, and uh, I got the bicycle hub for the center, and I was going to actually mount a disc on that, or some spokes, you know, a sheet of plywood basically, and yep. and then have build a track on the outside edge for yep. 18 ball. I and just... I was, uh, you know, I was going to make a fairly small as small as I could with a maybe a half inch extra space, plus the 18 balls in the track, and uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then have. Uh, some kind of motor but i i like this i like you this idea here with the bearings on it then then the balls can individually spin spin up however they want yeah and it'd be a lot quieter too the track. The, the track thing yeah is, is inevitably going to be noisy it seems uh, yeah and there's there's no friction for the balls to spin on here basically yeah the friction of the ball bearing which is next to nothing yeah, it would be interesting to see what happens because uh, when something, when a disc like that is rotated with a, a ball and a bearing on its edge, then the ball normally rotates a revolution for every revolution of the, the disc. And uh, that gets interesting at certain resonant frequencies and so on and so forth. Yeah, I, th I think I'm going to build it this way instead of the track just to, just to see because I think this is a great idea. Yeah, right on. Well, I've ordered um, one of the four reactors uh, Starship configurations from uh, Keshe Foundation USA. So that's kind of going to be the basis for something like this to uh, put together with that and uh, yeah. make the magic combination. Are you getting it chipped up? Yeah, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to... Uh, we're, making a special arrangement to see if we can do shipping and try to make it worthwhile for them and so it all works out and so on so i was trying to work out some of the glitches or possible problems that might happen if you do order and so on yeah i was thinking about seriously thinking about ordering a set of those things because i can't seem to get anything balanced and <laughs> working leak free and everything else <laughs> Yeah, there's some um, pretty extensive engineering that has to be, has to go into yeah. that kind of thing, and it's more than meets the eye. And I figure if I can get it, and if I notice improvements or find a, a source or a way to make it better, then so much the better. We can exchange ideas and keep up upgrading these to make them essentially uh, bulletproof, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there will be no more bullets after today, but uh, you might want to make them bulletproof anyway. Okay, um, what else about that, Lee? Any other ideas that you want to present? No, I think that's good. You've given me a great idea here today. I like it. <laughs> right on. That's what we're here for, to give each other ideas and keep moving things forward. All, all because of a kid's toy. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, kids' toys have been uh, 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 often the source of uh, not amusement here, but inspiration. Actually, there's I could grab, I could look over my. Oh, I actually got rid of some things that were. Uh, oh no, I didn't either. Like this little simple doodad here. Um, Let me spotlight my video here. Uh, I'll have to stop the share, I guess. And there we go. And make it bigger. Yeah, this little device here. It's a, a little uh, spinner thing that, uh, you know, the kids play with, basically. And you can do, you know, cool shapes with it. And I don't know, when I first picked it up, I just went, wow, is that ever cool? You can, you can do things. This is like, to me, this is like the... Uh, these are like the, the Magrav field or the, uh, the Vortex field. You could say around uh, uh, you know uh, uh, an object or uh, uh, the fields, and so you can play with this as if it was fields, especially when it's rotating. You can see how the fields take on a special effect that looks more um, solid when it's rotated. When it's not rotated, you see it's just rays. So rotating rays can have the effect of solidity, you might say. And uh, the interesting thing is you can do things like wrap this up as a package. It doesn't have to be this shape. You can bend it a little bit and it wraps itself up into a ball. Essentially it's a, if I do it right, it's a ball within a ball. Right? So it's all, it, it wraps itself up into its own perfect shape, sphere. If I unwrap it, it's actually another sphere within that sphere. And that becomes like two spheres. And that's interesting in its own, as its own shape, as the... Uh, figure eight uh, interaction of fields if you give it a little more spin there's another <laughs> configuration to 3d infinity loops yes exactly and you can see how the energy can spin and get all wound up and then you know when it's released it's in a, a totally different energy pack in its uh, you know, released form. And it's almost like there's, you could... Go ahead. There's your free plasma bowl. <laughs> yeah, essentially, yeah. And it's like, um, if this is the neutron, for example, and Kesh talks about the proton and the neutron, well, it's almost like this comes out as the electron, and as the electron's born from the from the uh, neutron, and we have a electron and proton now that are both tied together through. Uh, so, if I review that again, suppose you could say this was the neutron, but it ends up with. A little hard to get this thing to uh, cooperate sometimes. This, or maybe that's the neutron, and inside the neutron has the uh, the proton comes out, and but it has a, a a relationship with the, or rather the electron comes out, and what's left is a proton. The proton and electron have a relationship between each other. 
and maybe eventually all becomes back to one entity eventually forms its own center again inside saucer shape this one there's a transition one there somewhere See the core within a core there sometimes, right? Well, I think I messed it up a bit actually. <laughs> Something went, some of the rays got astray. Oh, I see, it's just got wrapped up around itself there. So, anyway, you get the idea there of transforming fields. And the idea being that kids' toys can uh, be pretty educational sometimes if you. Uh, play with them and inevitably oh there we go back to normal again I think it was easier there now there is the sphere within the sphere you can see it there now before it springs out Alright, well anyways, kids toys, joys of kids toys. Ask him a question. Ask her a question. And she'll give you a yes or no answer, but not for today. All right, let's carry on here. We're getting a little far astray, perhaps, but uh, we're always on point one way or another. So I'm going to be ending fairly um, soon today because I've got a lot of things in the background to do to get ready for the. Uh, World Peace Day and the signing of all the world leaders to the World Peace Document, which will take all day. Oh, Mark, beautiful shot. Let me get you in here. All right. <laughs> so, you know, I, I know you really have to go. You've got a lot of stuff ahead of you, but I well, still we're good for a few minutes here. It's okay. Go ahead. Just, just to get one, just one simple question. Anybody that's an electrical engineer or anything like that, you know, that knows electricity and how electricity works, I just don't understand how I have a positive and a negative on this system. And number two, since I do, and I'm taking it, I'm taking that brown wire is feeding the motor that is turning the egg is that plasma energy that's turning the motor for the egg those would be my two questions i'd like to ask you or the group or anybody that has great wisdom well you get two uh you're mixing um, 
eggs and apples there because you're asking a, a electrical person whether they whether it would be plasma energy powering the uh, the motor they would probably say that it's like a transform the AC into DC for your motor or through the coil system or you know something like that but on the other hand you could say that it is um, been converted into plasmatic energy through the through your system there and it could very well be plasmatic energy different than a normal DC current powering this thing so it could be uh, if you were to look at it with an oscilloscope it would probably be some sort of uh, cross between an alternating and a, a DC uh, current maybe a uh, pulse DC or something like that could come out of it or maybe the motor is actually functioning on an AC circuit as well you'd have to really uh, you'd have to measure the AC and DC going into the uh, going into the motor what, what do you get on the leads what do you get when you put your multimeter on the leads on those two brown leads for example when it's running and you put it on AC. On the two positions where they're at? Yeah, where the two brown leads from the motor connect. Just put your multimeter on them. Plus and minus, doesn't matter which way. And see what it says on the AC scale and then see what it says on the DC scale. Mm, so bad. Hold on one second. Okay, just so that we can see exactly, so that I know exactly. So, can you see the two browns? Yep. Yep. Okay, so that that this is what I designate as red for me for positive, and I I put my okay. black as my negative. Yep. Okay. So. On my on my handheld meter, you know the V one V has a squiggly one squiggly line on top or two squiggly lines on top, and one. Oh wait a minute. The one V has three dashes and a one long dash on top. What does that mean? That'll be your DC, I think, and the squiggly one should be your AC. Okay, so squiggly one single squiggly over the V is. That should uh, be your AC. AC. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the other one is DC. I believe so. Okay. Well, that's the way we'll proceed it because I that's the way I'm reading it. Yep. The V on the there's a V with three dashes and uh, a long bar on the top. And right now, um, it's given me. Okay, so that's the DC you're talking about. Yep. Okay, so 5 volts DC, 5.2, 5 and a quarter, somewhere around there. Okay. Yep. Try the AC now. So is that 8.9 volts? Huh. So you got 9 volts AC and uh, 5 and a quarter volts DC. So you've got an AC-DC converter there, maybe. 
you get to have whatever you want, AC or DC out of it. <laughs> take your choice. The motor no, takes it. The motor, take... the motor takes its choice, actually. So the question would be, can you run an AC motor off that? Can you run a DC motor off of it and both of them be happy? So that answers our question. Both of them would be happy, right? I think so. Because Looks if like I it. turn it up right now... You'd have to have a, a 10 volt AC motor, which there's not too many motors that are designed to be AC. All right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's overdriving that motor quite a bit, probably. That's, that's pushing it hard for sure, Mark. That's like the drag racing of uh, Magravs there. That, no, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's Detroit. Motor City. That's Motor City. That's what we do there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Is I that... used to. You know, I used to race my motorcycle in um, uh, Saginaw Speedway. Oh, really? Well, I raced there once. I didn't used to. I raced there once. And in, uh, what's the other one? I can't remember offhand, but, yep. Got a well, trophy for to show for it. I got, I don't know. I live close to um, um, Mount Clemens, and Mount Clemens had the Mount Clemens Speedway. Mm -hmm. And it was a quarter-mile track and a half-mile track on the outside, and I couldn't afford the half mile, but I had a little quarter miler and that was back in 85. And we just like to, you know, have a little fun out there every Saturday, Thursday and Saturday night. You know, those internal combustion engines are, can be a lot of fun, especially in the old days. But the new days, we've got um, several cities and have several cities have recently declared that they're going to eliminate internal combustion engines and diesel engines by 2040 including London and I think um, Paris sounds like a Model T well let's crank her up Sonny cuz she's a fine Fine jalopy of a day. Because <laughs> I know you got to go. We're just going to have a little bit more fun. This would be a good way to kick us out of here. <laughs> Boy, it's got some funny wobble to it. You can see in the video. It's, uh, the video captures the wobble in slow motion, kind of. It's interesting. And I think it just finds itself a balance point. It's a lot of, uh... <laughs> I don't know if she's going to hold together, Mark. There's a lot of unbalance there.
It's funny, we just hear this sort of whooshing noise. Sort of a Except when it's accelerating or decelerating, that's when we get the noise, like now. <laughs> Sound like a race car there. Wild, thank you, Mark. Good run. Dead stop, and we still got power. Dead stop? Is it? Yep. Is your what's your power supply say right now? Your main power supply. Uh, Leave that on. What's your main power? What's your power supply say? Is four point zero zero oh, okay. amps is zero point eight five three. Right, so if you turn off your power supply, will you get a little bit of remainder happening, or will it just cancel right out? Okay, it goes right down to zero, it looks like. None. Boom. Good night. Yep. Well, interesting. That was fun. Thank you. You betcha. Reminds me of the old days. The old days of drag racing and when cars had tires on them and motors in them and burned gasoline. Remember those days? <laughs> yeah, those were the good old days for all these electric things and flying cars and instant transportation. It used to be all the fun. It was going from one place to the other and taking a long time. That was the big thing about it. It wasn't about just getting there instantly is about how much rubber you could burn on the way. <laughs> how much rubber and oil you could burn on the way was important. How much noise you could make. You that noise, that was very, very important. It's, that's you got to have right. the rumbling V8. You got to, you know, you got to have that big rumble with the, the straight out pipes and the uh, take yep. off the, uh, sorry, the um, mufflers and. Yep. Yeah, Get it happy. That's all. It used to be we very important. We always said we were sorry. We always said, excuse me, we're sorry. But man, was it loud. <laughs> <laughs> and now you find, it's funny, but now you find most of the tracks of the old days are, have gone bankrupt because the, uh, the neighboring area has now been grown up and uh, has been developed and the people complain about the noise. So they have to shut down the tracks and uh, so on. But now some of those tracks are rejuvenating because now they have the electric car races, both in drag racing and in uh, uh, circle track racing and even in the Indy 500 type uh, races now. And uh, um, soon you'll see electric in NASCAR and that'll be, uh, you know, a big yeah. change. You'll see that. You know, it's a funny thing when you're sitting in traffic now and you hear the motor go, Gee! and I thought, why is these people starting their engine every time we're at a stoplight? Because no, it's the uh, hybrids uh, starting right? up. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, they banned uh, internal combustion engines and diesels in several cities recently. I think in uh, London and Paris and a couple of other places. And that's the way of the future is uh, you're going to find all the countries of the world are going to ban diesel as quickly as they can. They're trying to drop that like a hot potato after they found out how destructive it really is and how much the all the the uh, diesel manufacturers, the diesel uh, car manufacturers have been cheating on their emissions exams and they've been caught at it and there's just another round last week of Another uh, few hundred thousand vehicles have to be recalled and changed from years ago. This is vehicles that were, you know, manufactured 10 years ago that the manufacturers had, uh, Miss Mercedes just had to recall a million vehicles recently. Imagine how much that's going to cost. 
but uh, to them it's just a cost of doing business it's not that big a deal but their name now is tarnished and they recognize that and they're not pursuing diesels uh, anywhere near like they used to in fact uh, Volvo just uh, de made an announcement they're going to all electric um, starting in a couple of years and they're phasing out of all their internal combustion engines. That's, this will be the way of all the manufacturers. Within five years you won't have manufacturers making internal combustion anymore. It'll be a afterthought. Well, let's, let's stop and talking about all those bad people because this is the day of peace and we are hatching that's right and this is the way it used to be so now we don't have to be concerned with that so much and i'm so grateful that uh, the world is transforming the way it is it's just such a blessing mr akash has laid a new egg for us the golden egg <laughs> yeah. they said it was the golden age but no it's the golden egg that's what it's really about <laughs> And we see it here in Mark's reactor, the golden egg in the middle there. Eh? Maybe it will make gold. It'll make whatever you want it to make. Wasn't that the promise of the golden goose? Absolutely. So, Rick, you know you have a big, it's a very big day for you. Yeah, I should go and get prepared here. So, um, yeah, thanks everybody for attending as usual. And uh, let me just get my spotlight on here and say goodbye because uh, I do have to go and we could easily go on for a couple of hours probably on various things but enough for today I think we'll go with our spinner for peace and uh, try that as a concept maybe I'll have it ready for the, uh, the uh, workshop coming up tomorrow and uh, pay attention today for the um, World Peace Day and the signing of the World Peace Treaty of the Keshe Foundation by the world leaders. And we might be surprised who those world leaders who are signing really are. And I think all of the world nations will be signed one way or another. That's the clue. Rick, I would like to say I am Mark. Gothals from Detroit, Michigan, and I am present. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. I am Rick Cramond from St. John, New Brunswick, originally, but from Souk, B.C., and I am present. And I'm Doug from Mwilumba in Australia, and I am present. And I'm Lee from Okotoks, Alberta, Canada, and I am present. I'm Ekmar from Germany, and I am present. I'm pretty sure Guy would say something if he could there, but he doesn't, can't, probably doesn't have a microphone to talk or something. But in any case, I think that's good for now. So thanks, everybody. And uh, pay, tune in to the, uh, the coming day or two of the Kesh celebration and uh, signing for world peace. And today is Mr. Kesh's birthday as well. So it's really a day to celebrate, and we're all pretty excited, and this is the transition day for planet Earth. And we're going to see all kinds of changes uh, popping up in the next few days and weeks here. So, good times. Okay, enough for now. Thumbs up to you too, Doug, and everybody else. Take care and uh, see you next week on this channel.